What's up guys and welcome back for another video. My name is Riley and today I'm going to be doing an in-depth review of the cryptocurrency which is known as QTA. And as with any of my other crypto reviews, I'm going to put each of these headings um, in the description box below with a timestamp next to them that will correlate to each part of the video. So if you haven't seen that before, just go and click on the link that I put in the description and it'll take you to that part of the video. Also, if you're new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe and let's get into it, shall we? So to start off, Qtum is a hybrid blockchain development platform which is created by the Qtum Foundation. And this is the, I guess you could say, the governing body uh, which helps to develop it. They don't own it because it's a decentralized platform, but they are the ones who are responsible for creating the platform and developing the platform. And Qtum is also the native currency on the platform. And in terms of Qtum token metrics, Currently, we have 74 million QTM in circulation with a total of 100 million QTM. So, they're not that many coins when you consider some other coins like Ripple. So, just some stats on QTM. And first off, the block time is two minutes. Not a huge block time, not a very short block time, but it's pretty good nonetheless. Just the same case with the block size, two megabyte block size. So, it's not huge, but it's not tiny. Also, they have an inbuilt inflation rate of about 1% per annum. So first off, Qtum is built from a Bitcoin core fork, and with this fork comes both SegWit and a decentralized governance protocol. And what this does, it allows the chain to be simple, scalable, yet secure. And it also allows Qtum to integrate future Bitcoin upgrades for basically free and in a very easy process. SPV, or Simple Payment Verification on Bitcoin, which is basically um, the thing which allows light clients to operate, i.e., um, clients which don't have to download the whole blockchain, um, what it does, it allows Qtum wallets to easily engage with smart contracts and dApps, and this makes Qtum a very mo uh, viable option for mobile applications. And I mentioned the decentralized governance protocol, so this is a consensus protocol, and what this does, this allows the blockchain to be adjusted through a consensus mechanism, through a democratic voting system, which eliminates the need for hard forks, or more importantly, contentious hard forks, like we've seen on the Bitcoin chain previously. For its mining algorithm, Qtum uses a proof-of-stake algorithm which is much more energy efficient and has much lower fees than a proof-of-work algorithm such as Bitcoin. And now to get into some of the more, uh, I guess, the more nitty-gritty stuff which makes Qtum Qtum. And the first thing I want to talk about is the account abstraction layer. Basically, this is a layer which merges the Bitcoin chain and the next layer below it, which is a virtual machine chain. And in this case, um, at the moment, it's a mach virtual machine which includes uh, the Ethereum virtual machine. And what this does is it allows Qtum to have very easy smart contract compatibility. Although it's not the exact Ethereum virtual machine, it is very close to it. And why do they use this? Uh, because at the moment, it is the most used virtual machine and it has the most features currently. This may change in the future, but currently they're using the EVM. Since they're using the AVM as well, you still have to develop using Solidity, which is the programming language for Ethereum. This, however, allows people who have previously built on Ethereum to build on Qtum very easily, and even you can even possibly port your apps from the Ethereum chain over to the Qtum chain if you wish to do so. A cool feature about the account abstraction layer is that it allows different virtual machines to be used. So for example, Jordan Earls, which is a co-founder of Qtum, he's working on an x86 virtual machine which will allow the programming languages such as C, C++, C Sharp and Java. So some really big, well-known, well-used programming languages all around the world. And this opens up Qtum to a huge range of possibilities in terms of development and programmers and makes it more of a, I guess, a user-friendly platform to use. For developers, that is. Qtum also supports oracles, which if you don't know what an oracle is, it's basically when something that takes real-world data um, in real time and integrates it into a blockchain platform, blockchain system. So this has potential uses for really big markets such as prediction markets like gambling and all sorts of gambling and sporting and games and a bunch of other places where you could use prediction markets for. There's a few reasons why Qtum is useful and first off it's scalable, it has secure transactions and it has smart contract execution and this is done through the use of the Bitcoin blockchain and then the uh, virtual machine layer which 
currently is Ethereum, but here I've put XVM, meaning that it could be any virtual machine that you use because some better virtual machine could come out in the future and they could adopt it if they wish to do so. They also have flexibility of applications and this is due to the range of virtual machines that they can adopt and also the fact that they can integrate oracles so they have a wide range of use cases available to them. Another really nifty part of Qtum is that they can get what I call piggyback upgrades which is basically what I was talking about before when if either Bitcoin or the virtual machine uh, that they're using has an upgrade to their own network, they can quite easily obtain and integrate their upgrade, that upgrade that the other chain has used and bring it to the Qtum network. So for example, if Bitcoin does implement Lightning Network and it is successful and a good solution, Qtum can quite easily integrate Lightning Networks into its own platform. Also, the platform is designed to have a democratized consensus system, so it really does reduce, if not eliminate, the possibility of contentious hard forks. So to start off with the team for Qtum, I want to talk about the founders, and they're merely the main people that I want to target today. And the first off is Patrick Dye. Um, he has worked at Alibaba previously. Uh, he helped with the BitBay project, and he was in the 2017 Forbes 30 Under 30 for China. There is also Neil Mahi, who has 20 years software development experience and four years of blockchain experience. So he's got quite a bit of experience under his belt. And then there's Jordan Earls, the guy I mentioned before, who is very involved in blockchain and has his own vlog, I mean his own blog, where he points out different impurities in blockchains and does his own coin reviews. So I'll put his link in the description. So if you want to go read on some of his stuff, you can go check it out. He's a really smart guy and he's very insightful into what he does. Also, the platform has many significant investors, and these include Anthony DeLorio, who is an Ethereum co-founder, as well as many large uh, company directors or billionaires. And these may be people in the blockchain, owning blockchain companies, or owning other technology companies. For the community, uh, this has probably gone up since I've written this, but at the time making this video, Facebook, they had 11k followers on Facebook, so not a huge lot, but on Twitter they have 145,000 followers on Twitter, so that's quite a big following on Twitter. They also have the official forums on their website. They currently have about 14,000 people in their Telegram, and they also have the team which is very constantly engaging with the community on their Slack channel. So if you're looking to buy Qtum, I mean, if you're signed up for basically any exchange and any reputable exchange, you should be able to get Qtum. I mean, take a look at all these pairings. Like this is a ton of pairings. Oh my, I've just, to be honest, I've never actually looked at how many places that you can buy Qtum on. And this is quite a lot of pairings. If you look at most altcoins, they have only a small fraction of this. But to see this is a very good sign for Qtum because it means exchanges want the coin on their exchange. And in terms of storing, you've got quite a few options. So first off, you have the official Qtum desktop wallet, you have the official mobile wallet, and then you have the official web wallets. Also, you have the option for hardware storage, and this comes through the option with a Legend Nano S. Obviously, I would recommend using a hardware wallet when available, but if not, I would recommend using the official desktop wallet. So for the roadmap in the near future, what we can see for Qtum is that they've got about nearly two dozen ICOs coming out very soon. Um, they haven't really released a proper concrete roadmap just yet, but uh, they have currently struck a deal with Starbucks. Uh, this came very quite recently, I think it was probably two weeks ago now. Uh, they struck a deal with Starbucks, but they haven't really revealed what the details of that partnership is. So we're just going to have to wait and see uh, what comes out of that but it's very promising to have a partnership with such a big company nonetheless. And to cap everything off, my thoughts on Qtum, first off, it's got very innovative technology. It's smart how it's using technology of other chains. And this, what this does is it gives the platform a large number of use cases, like I, met, like I said before. Also, like I said, very handy if Bitcoin and or Ethereum or the virtual machine they're using finds viable scalability solutions because, I mean, that's all the rage of the crypto blockchain universe at the moment. And it's really going to be a race to see who can find the best scaling solution the quickest. And if Bitcoin or Ethereum do do it, it will be very, very beneficial for Qtum in the long run as the integration of that scaling solution will be quite easy and will help them really progress in their own platform. Because of the solid technology, the solid team, and everything behind it, I really do give Qtum a long-term hodl, and I will be adding it to my long-term bags on a dip. And you might be thinking, 
like with all these coins, especially all these platforms, there's so many good platforms out there. And how do you make a choice? How do you, you know, how do you figure out which ones you want to buy? Because you don't want to buy all of them. Otherwise, you'll be overextending yourself. And you also get a lot of people who are just like set on the one platform. They're like, Ethereum's going to make it or Neo's going to make it or Qtum's going to make it. But the fact is, no one really knows what's going to make it. But some platforms are better than others. You have some platforms with better technology, with better teams, with better partnerships, with bigger communities. And these are the things you have to look at. And although you can look at these, some you can't really, it's like comparing apples and oranges. So you can might compare Qtum to Neo, but you can't necessarily say one's better than the other just yet because they're trying to do completely different things and they have different technology. So my advice for these type of platforms and buying long-term holds is buy, look at the ones which you know are better than say others. So get like a group of them, say like your top five and buy those top five. Don't just buy everything, but don't buy one platform because at the end of the day, we don't know which platform is gonna make it, but we could have a general idea on which ones will probably make it. So that was my review for Qtum. If you like this video or found it helpful, please leave a like and a comment below on another cryptocurrency review you would like to see me do. If you forgot to at the start of the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And as always, I'll catch you later.